Kanja. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. Welcome back to Japan. Yeah, it's been too long. Right. When was the last time you were here? Like um, about 10 years ago, I think. I'm guessing, but it seems like about like that. Yeah, we went to disco together. <laughs> <laughs> and there was Mel Gibson <laughs> in the house. That's right. <laughs> it was fun. Paul Jackson Jr. That, that was. A, I think that's uh, the biggest disco I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. That place was just. It was very impressive. Still very popular here yeah. in Japan. It's called Belfare. But um, yeah, I I did some uh, spinning disc at that club really? a few times. Nice. It was fun, and a lot of uh, musician um, do the concert there as well. Yeah, it's a nice club, cool. but it was fun. You know, it's such an all-star band, and you've been, you know, producing a lot of uh, musicians, artists, and also, um, you know, the jazz festivals, etc., etc. Okay, um, could you tell us about, you know, like your latest uh, project or the producer stuff you've been sure. doing? Sure. Um, well, I put a record out uh, about a year ago on uh, Narada Jazz. I think uh, it's uh, it's on EMI over here, and. Um, it's called Flipside, mm -hmm. and sort of a little different kind of record, a little bit more cerebral. It's got some uh, kind of reggae uh, flavors and um, some uh, straight-ahead jazz vibe on a couple songs, some nice ballads. Uh, and um, uh, let's see, yeah, that, and that's, you know, it's been fun. I've had a chance to tour and play that music uh, quite a bit over in the U.S., and uh, other than that, producing, um, I've been a little bit busy lately. I just produced some music for Gerald Albright for his latest record, uh, and uh, David Benoit, both of, both of those guys. Those were sort of my latest projects. And I'm also uh, busy right now writing new music for my next album, which mm -hmm. I'm hoping, uh, it most likely it'll come out uh, at the beginning of next year. Uh, but I'm working with Bobby Columbi, who's a producer that, uh, he produced Chris Bode's last album. He used to be the drummer in Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And uh, this, is, this is a very ambitious record. We're writing a lot of music, and uh, it's going to be something really different for me. So I'm sort of uh, really excited about this project, too. Mm. Are you already working on it? Or? <laughs> well, we've written about mm. 20 songs. Mm. And um, we haven't really gone it. We're going to be recording a lot of it with you know, some terrific bands that we're going to put together. I think probably Dave Weckl, mm -hmm. Vinnie Caliuta, Brian Bromberg, Alex Al, bass, um, are going to most likely play on it. Uh, Eric Benet, we already have him singing on a, on a track. We did a version of uh, Bill Withers' song, mm -hmm. Grandma's Hands, that came out really nice. He, he, really? he really has just a great bluesy approach to it. And uh, I think Paula Cole might be singing on it, and uh, Janice Siegel from the Manhattan Transfer also. Wow, another all-star album. Yeah, Stand we're hoping so. I mean, it's still a little early, but it looks like that's how it's shaping up so far. Wow, you've got so many, you know, friends. I mean, you know, you've been this, in this uh, music business for a long time. Mm -hmm. You've been producing a lot of artists. You know, isn't it hard to, um, you know, pick the people? <laughs> I mean, you know, you've got so much friends. Well, you know, that's why I like working on my own records. You know, I, I think uh, when I produce other artists, it's easy for me to be very objective. But when I make my own records, I also like to bring in mm -hmm. producers to, to help me, you know, to, to lend that connectivity. So a lot of the um, sort of casting decisions, so to speak, um, you know, that's something that Bobby's really helping with. Mm -hmm. And he has a tremendous, I mean, you, you know, you're talking about like my career in the business, his career. I mean, he was in the biggest band in the world, Blood, Sweat and Tears, back in the 60s. So, you know, he goes way back and he used to be uh, an A&R guy for, uh, Sony and, and some other labels for, for quite a long time. So he has some incredible uh, friends and connections. And so um, I've been enjoying kind of uh, getting to know his posse and mm -hmm. his, his people. Actually, I think Gil Goldstein is going to be involved doing some arrangements. Wow. And uh, Jeremy Lubbock also is. So that, that's kind of part of his little creative, um, you know, posse that he likes to use. Mm. Wow, we can't wait to hear that. And also you will be touring with, you know, along with that album, and please come back to Japan with your own band. I hope so. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. You know, I've, I, love, um, I love coming here. I'm a big fan of uh, Japanese culture and the food and the people, and, um, you know, I've, I've had a, g a good time so far. I got a chance to go out into uh, Ginza and mm -hmm. go to my favorite uh, pen store, this place called Itoya in Ginza. Right. And, Itoya. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, you know, went to the ja the uh, electronics store, and mm. you know, that's always that's always fun because they have a lot of things here that we don't have in the U.S. Really? You know, and yeah, it's okay. Um, a few more questions. Um, first, 
um, can you give an advice to the keyboardist, a pianist who's watching this TV show, to that camera? Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, the music, uh, you know, playing music and developing your skills as a musician, it's, uh, you know, there's no, uh, everyone has to sort of find their own path, but um, I think the main thing is to just really focus on, figure out what you love and what you're really interested in, and, um, and then really kind of analyze that, take that apart, and figure out how to, um, how to, how to accomplish those particular goals. Like for me, I wanted to learn how to play like uh, Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea. But when I first started out as a music student, th what they were playing was a little too complicated for me. So I sort of got into the history of jazz piano and you know, kind of went back. And I think Horace Silver was the first guy that I listened to. I could sort of understand what he was doing. And I kind of got into Horace Silver, studied some Bill Evans. You know, obviously learning how to read and getting books and kind of studying that way can really help. And then eventually I started to have more insight into um, what Herbie and what Chick were doing and I could understand it a little better. Mm -hmm. And I really admire you as a producer. Um, could you tell, you know, give an advice to the people who wants to be a producer? Well, um, I learned the hard way, I, the school of hard knocks. I started producing all my own records. And uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend that. I think I probably could have learned more faster if I worked with other people and kind of picked up uh, some of their uh, techniques. Actually, between the 80s, uh, the, the late 80s and the early 90s, I started to do a lot of work as a session player. And then I got to work with a lot of other producers and I learned a lot then. I was working on a lot of um, uh, tapes from uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and uh, Teddy Riley and people like that. And you can like look at the tapes and see what they recorded and kind of like understand how they approach things. I mean, you can of course just understand just by listening and you know really uh, kind of taking things apart that way. But um, yeah, I, th I think uh, you know more than anything, both with with learning how to be a musician, learning how to be a producer, nothing beats just uh, getting as much knowledge as you can. Uh, working with other people that have something to teach you and just uh, spending as much time as you can just practicing and, and studying the, um, you know, the uh, technical aspects of, of what you're doing. And finally, message to your Japanese fans. Just, um, you know, I miss you and uh, I'm glad to be back in Japan and I hope I can come back uh, again uh, more often than once every 10 years. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, okay, Jeff. Thank you. San. So nice to see you again. Arigatou gozaimashita. Uh, domo, doitasimashite.